We are here with Agito, and I'm going to be the victim today. You're going to be the person giving me Digimon cards, and I'm going to see whether they are good or bad. I'm going to put my questions to the test. I'm going to put the card to the test, my card knowledge to the test of Yu-Gi-Oh! Magic and other games. I played Pokemon Yu-Gi-Oh! and Magic competitively at one point in my life, but I've never played Digimon. I don't know what any of these cards are. So if you've played Digimon and you're watching this, make sure to just make fun of me in the comments that you can just do that if you want. But, um, Aguido, you're going to give me five cards, and I'm going to tell you whether mm -hmm. they're good or bad. Um, do you know anything about Magic or Yu-Gi-Oh! or any other card games? I know a dabbling of, of everything, but not necessarily enough to sort of be honed on knowledge. And, I, and you told me that you are a caster for Digimon, right? I am a caster. I am normally casting for OPE or Raid and Trade in the European Union. All right. So I, since I'm talking to the cream of the crop for Digimon here, got to make sure we have some interesting oh. cards. I'm going to start out with the first card. Before we get started, I also want to give a quick shout out to the new sponsor of the show, Prodigy Games. They have Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, Digimon, you name it, anything you could ever want in a card store. You can save 7% off of anything in the store by using code JAMES7 at checkout. Link in the description below. Mega Digimon Fusion. It is a zero, what is that, a zero cost to cast or to, to play it? So just, just to sort of give you a little sort of like how our mana or the card value works in Digimon, everything has a memory value. So this has a zero cost memory value. So it doesn't cost anything to play it. You just zero need to have memory. A way of so it on like the man memory is like similar to mana? Uh, in a sense. So... Uh, the memory gauge goes from 10 on either player side. So there's 10. I'll, I'll send you a mat so that way you can put it on screen so I'll so like show everyone how like it works. Okay. So the, the starting point is zero in the middle, and then you can go to 10 to either player side. So if you get 10 memory on your side, you have up to 20 memory to spend, which is obviously if you can see the different card values, you can see like it's a lot of memory for most cards. So if you have 10 this, memory, you can spend up to 20 memory? Zero. Yeah, so you can spend up to... Uh, 10. So let's say, for instance, you spend 9 memory on your side, and then you want to spend another 11. Because it's still 1 memory on your side of the gauge, you can go up to their 10. Okay, so you, if you can use your opponent's memory, right? What you're saying? Yeah. So, so how do they get... You can you only use memory a, reset at the start of your turn? So when it goes to their turn, they'll then go to whatever you left it at. So if you use, let's say, you start at 3 memory on your turn, and you use 7, then on their turn, it starts at their 4. Oh, okay. So, in order for you, so, so you're like basically balancing like mechanic. a balancing act. Yeah, yeah. Like, like in order for you to do more powerful stuff, you give them the opportunity to do more powerful stuff. Yes. Ah, makes sense. Or at least try and sort of play into it. So, yeah. So, it's a lot of people who've played Magic who did come to Digimon when it was first new did like the memory system because it was very much an ebb and flow of how to play the game. So, if you if you can make a play for as little mana as possible, it might be optimal to in order to give your opponent less mana on their turn. Or less like memory? That's not, that's not how you want to do it. So you start the game off, You whoever goes first starts at zero, and they'll generally want to make a play where they either uh, do like a very small amount of memory to your opponent's turn so they can't have a big play themselves, or you'll play down so you call a memory setter, which means that you'll always have free memory at the start of your turn. So you're, you're trying to give yourself either a big advantage at the start of the game, or you want to try and give your opponent as little advantage as possible at the start of their game. Okay, makes sense. All right, so this is zero, so it doesn't cost anything. And it says main, so it means you can just use it during any time during your main phase, or like activate this in your main phase at any time. So, so to be sort of quick, uh, how Digimon works is kind of similar to how a lot of the other card games work, but it's a lot more simplified. So you have uh, start of turn, draw, breeding area, which is its own like sort of like special pocket in the game where like nothing can really interact with it itself. Main, which is everything else, and then a hidden phrase, which is end of turn which isn't actually a mechanical place itself, but it is used to finish effects off normally. Okay. The next time one of your Digimon digivolves from level 6 to level 7 this turn. Okay, how do you digivolve? Uh, you just get the card. So you, you got, let's say, a War Grain on the field, which is, let's say, in this case, is a red card. You want to digivolve into a level 7. That will say, uh, in its digivolving requirement areas, that it could digivolve from a red or a blue card. Wargreymon being red, uh, instead of having to pay the cost to go into it, you'll use this card instead to reduce its cost by six to go up to it. You oh so you, okay, kind okay. of like Pokemon. So you know how Pokemon does like its evolution system where you have to like put uh, yes. like the evolution on top of it. Very yes. similar to that, except not as like once per turn, so you can continually do it as long as you got memory to do it with. 
Okay, so it costs so your you memory, from... and then you can go from six to seven. It reduces the divi- digi digivolution. Is that how you say that? Mm-hmm. By mm-hmm. six. So it's kind of like a rare candy in Pokemon, kind of? It's a rare candy, um, but it does have a disingenuous effect at the end. Okay. At the end of the turn, return the Digimon that digivolved with this effect to the bottom of the owner's library, or I said library, deck. Trash all the Digivolution cards of that Digimon. Okay, so it's kind of like a one-shot, like, uh, Rare Candy, whereas Rare Candy just, the Pokemon stays there. Um, Mm -hmm. And then it says, Security, add this card to its owner's hand. So instead of having uh, price cards like you would in Pokemon, or life points like you would in Yu-Gi-Oh!, and I suppose just life in general as in in, uh, NTG, you have um, a security section which is essentially uh, imagine like a firewall so you've got five securities of firewall Mm -hmm. if this is hit from your security area and it's uh security effect isn't negated you can add it to your hand got it okay so security is whatever happens after this card like leaves your your security wall your firewall Mm -hmm. kind of like kind of like a one piece where it has like the trigger effects yes it'd it'd be very similar okay got it um is this card good or bad uh Gosh, every every card that's like this in other games is absolutely bonkers. Um, this has like a really big downside though, and but I, and I don't know how big the jump is. How, I don't know how powerful level sevens are. And where are the levels, by the way? Oh, level it'll just show, like it'll show on a card of like yeah. So level sevens are generally like the end that you want to get to, and sometimes in this case, it's just to get you to level seven. Do what the level seven wants to do, which can be cast like board wipes. Uh, set you up for like more plays, put more things on the field. Uh, essentially, they're the, they're the things you want to get to that's going to make you say, like, I'm going to win this game now. Okay. Uh, it also does cost a card out of your hand. Uh, do you draw a card at the start of your turn? Or at the, or like at the end? You or... draw a card when you start a turn, and then every time you digivolve, you draw a card. Oh my god, whoa! Every time you digivolve, some you draw a card? Some cards will say, when you digivolve, draw another card. So some cards will be a case of like, yeah, on play, or when digivolving, draw a card. Oh my so goodness. You, this game has such good... Um, recursion for drawing it's not really sort of losing one card is not necessarily like the the downfall like it is in a lot of other games oh my gosh i'm just thinking about like the about how pokemon would be if you could just draw a card. do you draw a card after you digivolve with this yes oh my god it's um, the mechanic of digivolving that you draw how many cards do you start with your in your opening hand uh five if you go first it's five you're putting it six okay do they start with six or do they draw a card at the start of their turn uh, draw the first card. Okay. Um, I mean, it's hard for me. I and mean, there's a huge downside, but like, it's hard for me to 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 ration with myself that this card's bad. I'm just gonna say it's broken. Okay. Good broken or bad broken? Oh no, good broken. It's like good broken. very good. Would you like to? Have you finished guessing? Would you like to I'm, know I'm finished how guessing. I think is? it's very good. Uh, you are 100 correct. This is our only banned card in the Digimon card game. Oh my gosh, it's banned banned it's there's a couple of loops it can do that makes it essentially impossible for your opponent to play uh yeah okay yeah um after as soon as you sold, told me that you drew a card from this or you draw you draw a card when you did evolve i was like that's busted because like you would think that you'd lose all the cards attached to this but if there's that good of draw power in the game already like you don't you don't you lose something but you don't lose like a lot like you can replace the card very easily and it replaces itself already like this card this card is like yeah i was saying this card's like really really broken in a good way so go, go ahead it, it took a while for it to be figured out how good it really was. There was a deck called Lilith Loop, which essentially would go into the level 7. The level 7 then would return the Lilith to hand. Uh, so when it did the end of turn effect where it would just disappear, the main piece of your deck is back in your hand already, so you don't have to worry about losing anything on the next turn. Oh my god. And then what the card also did is it put level 5s on the field. So you put, a level, you put two level 5s on the field. It would do its thing. It would then just disappear. And then you got to put the Lilith back on one of the level 5s to do it again the next turn. So it's just never ending. Never ending. It wow. was uh, painful for your opponent. And then later on in a hybrid meta, we figured out that you could use uh, Susanamon with this for like a cost of one. And that card basically just went like, you can't lose the game. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, one, okay. day, one day we'll <laughs> get this card back. One, one day we'll get this card back. I'm happy you got this one right. Okay, but, let's, let's see this the... Is really good. Yeah, this is like a, a rare candy if the rare candy was full of uh, meth. Yeah, it's, it's like Rare Candy is already good enough to like be banned in certain formats of Pokemon, like back in the day. Mm. Uh, and it's still a very, very good card, even in 
like most recent you know formats where rare candy is in and if they made rare candy better which is what that card seemed like rare candy would just be insta banned so happy i got that one right yeah. let's move on to the next card it is blinding ray it is a zero cost um main trash the top card of your security security stack it's a little bit hard for me to read this one since it's full art and it's a little bit Sorry. small yeah trash the top card of your security stack then gain two memory oh then gain two memory okay Trash the top card of your security stack then gain two memory well if we learn from the so last one that your security stack one life two memory that, that's what you're paying basically okay so judging by the last card where mm -hmm. there is a security ability uh, mm -hmm. to add it to your hand um that is probably means that there's other security abilities and do you get to control what's in your security or is it just like the top random five cards or whatever on your security so the top five random cards go to your security hold on as it work now so it's changed so what it does now is uh did you want to have like a mulligan uh rules change about six months ago i think it was uh maybe nearly a year now so now what it is is you draw your first five you will now Look at the first five and see if you want them. If you don't, you will then mulligan them back into the deck. Draw five, put five onto security. Oh, okay. Got so it's it. your second five cards. Okay. You draw five cards to your opening hand, then put the top five into your security. Mm -hmm. Okay. So trash the top card of your security, then gain two memory. Gain zero mana, gain two memory? Or it, zero memory it's... to gain two memory, but you trash the top card so you like lose 20 you lose like 20 percent of your life to gain two memory. um from everything that i know from how mana excel slash memory acceleration works in pokemon and and um and magic if you could do that for zero mana my god that would be banned um even 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 my hearthstone knowledge if you could just pay what do you start with hearthstone 30 so if you you could if you paid like yeah. what seven life to you paid se how good would a card in Hearst done be pay seven life and then gain two mana crystals that card would be banned. Um, I'm gonna say this card this card's really good. Final answer. Final answer is it's really good. So it's a decent card. Not used too much these days. There's a couple of decks that use it as a niche sort of play around because they have the color for it. So something I didn't explain earlier, and for those of you who've probably got like five, six minutes in the video now, Digimon works off colors. So you have to have a corresponding color on your game board somewhere to play these cards. Not that it necessarily matters. Um, Digimon has a do as much as you can clause. So if you have no security, you just gain two memory. Oh, wow. Oh, so, so if you're like, a, if you're about to die, like you lose by your opponent attacking you and you not losing a memory, right? Yeah, so if your opponent gets you down to zero shields, yep. and you go, all right, I've got four of these in hand for whatever reason, you can just gain eight memory. Oh my god. I mean, see, if I knew that, I would say, it would, I would say that it was banned. But I think, <laughs> like, I think, um, like, even losing a life, even, even trashing the top card of your security to gain the two memory, I think is, is very good. Like, yeah, you have to have a yellow card in play, right, for you to use this? Mm-hmm. Um... I, I just still think that effect in general is like abusable. It's at four. It's used very nichely these days because it's not so good. It was it was very powerful back in the day because it was quite annoying, very annoying to work around because you couldn't physically work around it, especially when your opponent would then just beat you to death with uh, other cards. But uh, no, it's just a, a very random run of the mill card that's used on like one or two decks now. And those two, and then those one or two decks are like ramp decks that want to do like something powerful on turn one. Uh, normally sort of like turn two or three so you need to set up a little bit first and then all of a sudden it would just be like throw down so yeah it's like a ramp deck that you would play as okay yeah it's, it's kind of so it's kind of like um, so the way you're ex explaining it is it's less zero mana gain two but it's more of like cultivate if you've heard of that card before in magic it's oh, I don't think it's kind of like Voltron in yellow you want to get the main card out on the field for, so it's still your turn and then you basically want to swing for six Okay, so you swing for like a big amount because you use this card, and it really doesn't mm. matter that you trash the top card of your security if your opponent's like almost dead. That's the point. Yeah, you want to try and get yourself in a position where either they're dead because you're going to do this, or they've got no way to sort of combat it. Okay, that's fair. Okay, yeah, 
that that sounds that sounds like it's really good. I thought I thought that like more decks could be able to to could utilize this, but since it's in a specific color, I didn't even, I didn't even like comprehend that it was in a specific color. That um, so it makes it a little bit more. Gonna niche, come not a yellow really. card later, and you'll kind of see like why your like pattern actually isn't wrong. Okay, but we'll, we'll come to that one we'll probably towards the end. Okay, so good. um, yeah. yeah. So I, I guess, I guess like, it's not bro it's not broken. Like it's not really really good. It's niche, but it's still it played. Card. So it is a, like a good card. It's a good card. Okay. Yeah, good. Back in the day, it used to be used a lot in yellow because you could run like one or two of them just to sort of like, sneak in the extra memory and try and like do a few more plays. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, it's used in specifically um, X Hearts, which is like a very specific deck that only really runs that and another card that does something very similar in red. Uh, just again to try and get yourself to ten memory, throw some cards, stay on your side, and then just throw as many bodies at your opponent as possible. Yeah, so sounds good. <laughs> Let's um let's go to the next one and uh, maybe maybe you're not tricking me to see if like to, to, like every card's good and I'm like wait let me metagame this he's gonna show me some cards that are bad right <laughs> um all right let's go on to the oh my goodness this one is a fifteen cost fifteen thousand mm -hmm. DP what is DP uh Digimon Power so it's it's a uh, fighting force there are an absolute metric ton of symbols and words on these so i'm going to ask you a lot of stuff okay so this is specifically like the highest rarity this is what we class as like a ghost rare card this is why i picked this artwork so this is um like the best version of this card in terms of artwork because it's a throwback to the original card game as well as it being a throwback to the anime okay did you evolve blue green black purple so you can did you evolve this over any mo uh, digimon that's blue green, any of those black, or purple? four colors so red is a no-go and yellow is a no-go so uh blue is because it's so it's the like leader of the dark masters so let's just let's just talk about the uh, digimon as a franchise so the blue is for um metal siege Ramon, the green is for puppet man the black is for machine Ramon, and purple is for pied man okay so you can did you evolve this over any one of those four any one of those four okay Level six, cost six. So, what is the cost if the play is fifteen? What does the cost mean? So, the cost is when you digivolve, you're going to spend six to go into it from one of these. But if you, um, oh, you have to spend six. Do what you um, like first effect uh, memory. Yes. So, let's say you're like on three. You go into this, goes to three on your opponent's side. So it's now their turn. Although you're in a deck where you could probably actually have like six memory and just be like sod it. So what now is so what does the fifteen copy. play mean? Uh, so you can hard, you can physically play something on the field. Oh, oh, I get it. Okay, so fifteen is the hard. So if you're a five, it. you can throw it down for. But if you read the first effect, you'll understand like the the play cost isn't necessarily as big as you think it is. Okay, the ultimate gathering of dark apocalyptic power. Nice. It's like yes. it's like in in Yu-Gi-Oh, Yu -Oh, where it's like dark magician, the ultimate wizard in terms of attack and defense. Um, except this guy is kind of uh, kind of actually beefy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Ap Apoclamon. Did I say that right? Yeah. Okay. When this card will be played, by placing up to three Dark Masters trait cards, so it's like a creature type, like a monster type. So that would be the, the four cards that I mentioned earlier. Metal Seedra, Puppet Man, Machine Dramon, and Pied Man. From the same set this is from, they were given their correct um, titles, which is the Dark Masters. So if you put one of the, like three different ones of those underneath it, you, you can get this effect. Oh, got it. When it will be played, by placing up to three Dark Masters trait cards with different names from your battle area or trash, under or trash oh my god yeah i read or trash and that is bananas reduce the play cost by yeah. four for each one hold on what do you play by placing up the trigger okay so this is actually three to hard cast if you use your grid. oh this is like this is like delve in magic okay yes At end of it's, end of your turn is very much the graveyard deck end of your turn so this is this is like a, this is like hogak uh end of your turn once per turn by placing one level six or lower card from your trash as this Digimon's... I'm going to read that again. By placing one level six or lower card from your trash as this Digimon's bottom Digivolution card, activate one on-play so, effect on that... Go ahead. So, like Pokemon, obviously, you, like, you Digivolve over it. Uh, sorry, you evolve over your Pokemon. With Digimon, you can insert things at the bottom of your cards as well. So, wherever, like, say, your Pidgey is going to Pidgeot into Pidgeot, well, this can then add, say, like a spear underneath it and go like, well, there you go, I've got a bigger stack now. Even though it doesn't, like, have to digivolve into it? Like, you just put a, sp a random nope. Spearow or Doduo just underneath it? Just suck it in. As they say, just suck it up. Okay. Right at the bottom. 
by placing hopefully it, have a good effect but that's, that's cool. so in that way it's kind of like mutate in 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 magic where you can put a it on the bit, bottom yeah. or the top okay by placing one level six or lower card from your trash as this digimon's bottom devolution card activate one on play effect on that card as an effect of this digimon oh oh that's insane oh mm -hmm. oh wow uh, so that happens only once per turn and also happens at the end of your turn? Or is that a different thing? Yes. Okay, got it. No, so it happens at the end of your turn, but it can only happen once. Because there are ways where you can end your turn and then gain enough memory to go back into your turn to do it again. So what they've done is essentially made it so that if, you do, if you're ending your turn, but then somehow you gain memory to go back into your turn, you couldn't do it again because it hasn't gone back to your opponent yet. Okay. It only goes to your opponent's turn after, you, uh, after they have memory? Uh, so, when you finish your turn, as long as everything has finished resolving, end of turn effects like this would then start to resolve. Um, and then, once they've resolved, you would then check where the memory is again. As long as the memory is on your opponent's side, it will be their turn. If the memory has somehow gone back to your side, uh, all end of your turn effects have resolved, but they cannot. But if they're once per turn, they cannot resolve again. And then, if it happens to go, but the memory goes to your side, you would just draw a card and it's a new turn. No, no. So it stays on your. It says on your turn. Okay. So the. So, so instead, of how, hoops, instead so, of having like a second like phase, you just go back to being just your turn again. Okay. So turns without, don't without actually end over. when you say they end. You can't just pass turn. You pass turn by using so up all of memory. So when you pass turn, so pass turn in Digimon is a um, a command. So if I go on passing turn, I instantly give you free memory. Three, free or three? Free, number three. Okay, number three. Okay. When I pass because the turn to I'm... you, you just get three memory. Yeah, because um, it was their way of saying instead of like going past the turn, you're at one memory. It was a way of making sure that you're always going to spend enough memory to sort of uh, make it worth your opponent's uh, opponent's way of playing or you you playing into it. Oh, I so, get it. I get uh, it. Okay. A deck called okay. Security Control generally will just pass the turn constantly to their opponent because they don't want to give them too much memory, and then all of a sudden they'll have like ten memory every turn, and then they'll just be like, "Well, now I don't need to pass the turn." Makes sense. It okay. never ends. Okay. Then you to read the card. Then trash the top two cards of your opponent's deck for each of this Digimon's level six Digivolution cards. I mean, and the, the BT15102 so at the end of there and the SEC032 stars thing are just like, all of that doesn't mean anything, right? So BT15 is the set it's from, which is a Seed Apocalypse. Uh, zero, so 102 is its set number, so it's just the card in the set. Uh, the two stars is its rarity, as in uh, it's an alternate alternate art. So, uh, the SEC is its secret rare, so it's one of the like you get like two or three of these per box, uh, for, per case. Sorry, and then the O3 is its rotation box. So Digimon was going to do. I think Digimon was planning on doing a rotation at some point, but instead they decided to keep it as a living card game. But they might do tournaments in the future where it's like you can only run cards that are in uh, bracket C or bracket three in this case. Wow. Okay, and the mega unknown unidentified down there is just like the type of creature it is, the type of, of Digimon it yes, is. Yes, so, so level six and seven is a megas. Unknown is just its trait, and unidentified is its um, category. So some cards will search for this by specifically looking for unknown or unidentified. I mean, it's hard for me to say this card's bad. This card's just broken in half. This card's just super freaking good. Like, I mean, it it has delve. You get to you get to. Um, repurpose enter the battlefield triggers from your cards in your graveyard. Um, it also mills your opponent. Not sure how relevant that is, but like, if you have any way to like put cards in your graveyard fast at all, this card is out of this world good. And but by the way that you said it was a living card game, you probably have a lot of cards that do that already anyway. Like whether you get to draw cards and discard cards, or just mill cards yourself or whatever. Um, and this card is just out of this world good. That's my final answer. So you're correct. Is well. Out of 10, how good did you say this is? Oh, it, it, I mean, I don't know how powerful the most powerful card in the game is, but I'm going to say this is like 9.5. You can go past 10 if you wish to. Yeah, okay, okay. I was going to say, I don't, I don't know what the most powerful card is, but this seems like it would be the most powerful card. Like, it, this card is, reads absolutely bananas to me. If you told me it was bad, I'd have to, like, reevaluate re any card evaluation I've ever done. So, you know the scale for magic, right? It goes 1 to 15. 1 to 15? This is like store. Oh, so, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is this is like did the whole the, like yeah, what, this is like storm. This is like eleven. Okay, so this is like one. This is like the best card ever. Like outside of the, so the first good. card that was banned, right? 
yes, that card was banned because it was just good at making things be degenerate. Right. This card was the only card to ever be in a tier zero deck. Okay. Makes perfect sense. I And because of how powerful it was, it got four of a cards limited to one. <laughs> it's like it's like Tillament. Tillament got like a card ban a three cards banned and then like it's like seven other cards limited to one. Limits everything straight away and not do one at a time over like six months. <laughs> I mean, because yeah, if, you, like, if you told me this card was bad, I would have a ended the video no, right now. So this card is so good. It was literally a tier zero meta where if you weren't playing Apocalypse, you weren't playing anything because you physically couldn't because you'd be either milled out before anything could happen or they'd get two on the field and then mill you out even quicker. Um, it got Gabumon X from EX5, Garumon X from EX5 limited to one. Because both of those cards will draw a card on Digivolving. So you're drawing two cards, and then you'll also uh, trash two cards. Yeah. Put in the cards you want in the trash. Yeah. Um, and then Anubismon, which is also a graveyard-centric deck that was also using the same engine, got limited to one because, again, it was doing the same things where it was putting everything in the trash. And all of a sudden, you've just got a full board of, like, 12 buddies. What are you going to do? Yeah, this card and is... I'm trying to think of the other thing that was limited. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I had a feeling. <laughs> God, it's absolutely yeah, it was, it's very good. It basically destroyed a it destroyed a archetype because it was too good. But purple is one of those weird things where they can't really balance it because it has to do very aggressive things to just be playable. That's fair. Um that's like trying to make like mono red cards balanced, where it's like it's only good yeah. if the card's really, really good. And if it's really, really good, that means it, that means it's not balanced anyway. So it's like kind of like a circular reasoning mm. thing. Uh, and, and if it's not that good, then people just won't play Mono Red. <laughs> so it's, it's like the only way it's yeah. going to be a deck is if, it's, if the deck has really good cards in it. So it makes sense. It has to be good enough, but not too good. I'm trying to think, what was, what was the, the key word they used for, like, um, haste? But you could only use it on, like, one turn and it died at the end of the turn. Came in with the set after Neo Dynasty. Um, wait, the mechanic where it comes in with haste, but then it dies? Blitz. Blitz. Oh, it's Blitz. Blitz, Blitz. yeah, can... yeah. yeah. Yeah, that, that's why I feel like a lot of red cards were like built then for like a couple of years. It's like it's really good for that one turn, but then it implodes for some reason. Yep. <laughs> uh, there's also like mechanics to do like, that, okay. like unearth, where like you can bring it back out of the graveyard. It has haste, but then it just dies at the end step because it's like if it stayed on the board, that'd be like too broken of an effect. It makes sense as well because it's technically a, like a rotten zombie. So it's like I've done my zombie things now. I'm dead again. Yep. Exactly. All right. Let's go ahead and move on to the next card. Uh, this one is Magna Angamon, Angrymon. Magna Angimon. Angimon. Magna Angimon. Angimon. Level 5. Play 4. De detective? Digivolve for free. Oh, I don't know why I read that as detective. Did, did you <laughs> evolve for, for free? Th no, this isn't my, uh, <laughs> was it uh, the last card, the last set that came out. Uh, did you evolve? Manor, what it was. What was it? Did you evolve for 3, but it has like LX4 on it? Level 4. So it goes over level 4. Oh, level four. Okay, got it. As eight thousand power, digi power. Yeah, um, so it has that kind symbol. Of okay. It's like in the range of where level five should be. Okay, okay. So hand counter blast digivolve. One of your Digimon may digivolve into this card without paying the cost. Okay, this counter means you have to use it in response to what your opponent does. Yes. So. This is kind of the basic. This is the Digimon equivalent to like a hand trap. Okay, that's the, that's what I was gathering. That's what I was beginning to think about but when I read hand counter. Blast Digivolution itself has is like a, a certain timing, so it has to be after one of your opponent's Digimon has swung for a into your security or into you. So they'll swing. They will use their when attacking effects, and then if the thing you want to Digivolve on top of is still alive, you can then blast Digivolve on top of it. Okay. And how do you, and do you attack players or do you do attack Digimon when you when you battle? Uh, technically both. So if the Digimon is suspended, you can attack into it. Uh, if you have an effect that says you can attack unsuspended Digimon, you can also swing into it. And there is a keyword called raid, which will let you attack into the strongest target on the field. Raid like R A I D. Yeah. Okay. Like it's raid time. <laughs> okay. On play when Digivolving. So you can blast Digivolve this. So both these, what was that? Yeah, so both these effects will trigger from either when you play it or when you blast Digivolve it or when you normally Digivolve it. Okay. 
So your opponent your opponent attacks you with a Digimon and take and takes one of your life after their attack triggers, and it doesn't kill your Digimon. When that happens, you can blast Digivolve on your opponent's turn, and then when it's played, when you're Digivolving, if you have five or fewer mm-hmm. security cards, recovery plus one deck. Recovery plus one. Deck. So you take the top card of your deck and you put it on top of your security. Oh, recovery. Okay, gaining life, kind of. Okay, so. Yeah. You put a card from the top of your deck into your security. Then, for the turn, one of your opponent's Digimon gets minus 1,000 Digipower for each card in your security stack. Uh, how many Digimon can you have on the board at one point? As many as you can physically put on the board. Okay, so magic. Unlimited. Yeah. Okay. It's unlimited. It's a Magna Angemon Ace. Um, mm-hmm. Overflow minus three as this card moves from the battle area or under a card to another area, lose three memory. Wow. Uh, it moves from the battle area or under a card to another. So if its source is stripped and this is in the sources, it goes either to your hand or to the trash or to the deck. Uh, the overflow would trigger. If it goes from the battle area underneath something else, uh, it wouldn't be removed from the battle area. It's just moving in the battle area to a different position. Okay. So it has to physically remove itself from the, the, the field. Okay. This hand is the only hand trappy card that I've seen, but if you're playing against a yellow deck, you probably like definitely have to play around this card. Um, it probably stops your opponent from killing you in a way, because you can... It has the recovery plus one. Um, are there a lot of cards with counters? Are there a lot of counter cards? So... This is fairly new. BT14 was the first set to really bring in the the uh, key mechanic of Blasted Evolution. So we've only had it for a couple of sets now. Uh, in Japan, because there are a couple of sets ahead of us, we have up to, I think, 20 cards with the Blast. So any ace card is essentially is a Blast card. So I think we've got about 20 aces now. Okay. I'm trying to think of how good reducing your opponent's thing by minus 1,000 Digipower is. Um, when you, when you uh, attack just into, like... It, a... So DP reduction in Digimon is a game mechanic and non effect. Um so it can't be ignored. Okay. So when you're attacking into say I have a Digimon and I'm attacking into mm-hmm. into like a four thousand Digipower thing with my four thousand mm-hmm. Digipower thing, do there does their thing die or do we both die? So the actual hit from your Digimon won't actually happen until after I've blast Digivolved. So if I have four or more security, I can reduce your DP to zero, and it will disappear before it even touches me. Oh, oh no, I- I'm talking about like in, in regular combat, not, in, not with Magna Angemon. I'm talking about like in general. Oh, so yeah, if you, if you were to swing into me in a body and I couldn't blast Digivolve, we'd just crash. So you would both die? Yeah. But it would only be if yours, yours is like rested, or if I have an ability that it can attack like an unrested character. Yes. Okay. And blockers in Digimon can only be effect- it can only block if they actually have the word blocker or have a way of blocking from something else. And it's only from the field that you can block and not from the hand? Are there hand blockers too? Yes. There's no hand blockers. Okay. Don't, don't give them ideas. <laughs> oh my gosh. Watch them come out with hand blockers after this. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't want like blast play where it just throws down like a 1k blocker and stops you from winning the game and your opponent just steamrolls you for the rest exactly. of the game. That's what I'm thinking about. No, I don't want that. Okay, so no. I'm going to say that this card is good, but it's not, like, super broken. So out of, out of 10, you can go over 10. What would you say this is, like, on, a, on the scale? Like a 7.5. 7.5, okay. Uh, there is a worse version of this card that I'd put at an 8. Oh. So there's a, basically the same card as this uh, called Magna Angemon. It's from BT1. It's 8 cost. Uh, I think it's got 6,000 DP. And the reason you play it is because you can put it on the field, it's a level 5, and you recover 1. This is the same thing except for a cost of 4. And oh, even if you get rid of it from... So this is very good. This is probably one of the reasons why the world champion for Digimon over the last weekend won his games. I mean, I, I, can, see how, I can see how using this as a hand trap... Like, like, your opponent never really wants to like attack into your stuff if they know you're playing yellow, because they know... That if they can't actually kill the Magna Angemon, they should not even attack that character to begin with. So, 
because you don't really care about attacking into your opponent's Digimon unless you have like a piercer, which is essentially the name says it all. You hit it and you go through. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember if I think Trample would be the closest thing for Magic. Uh, you you go uh, piercing as well. Yu -Gi -Oh. Yeah, so it's the same difference, except you don't reduce your DP when you go through. So I know with uh, Yu-Gi-Oh, it's normally like, uh, if you kill this monster, reduce your damage by half and, and flip like 1,000 DP instead of um, like 2,200 or whatever it is. Whereas in this, uh, you kill the thing first and you keep your DP at whatever level it is and then you hit into security. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I can see how this It's very rare to... So there's not really many decks currently around that run any piercing at all, so that's not really something scary. I think there's like one or two rogue decks that do run a piercing variant. Uh, so it's never really, that's the issue for you. Uh, but for your opponent, if you're playing against this, if it's their first turn, they can either give you four memory and recover to six, which means they're already at one security higher than you are, which means they've got one more life than you have. But then on your next turn, they've got an 8,000 DP creature they can swing into your security. Right. Or they can go into a level six, so they're already going to be uh, levels ahead of you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can see how, how that's really good. So yeah, um, the combat thing was a, like a little bit weird to me because I think you, Digimon's is like structured a little bit differently than I've seen in any other card game. So I didn't know like how good the combat, th how like the tricking in combat thing would be. Like in Magic, doing like combat tricks like this would be really good if they were like stapled onto a creature that had flash or something. Um, and mm. also the creature this, had some other like crazy ability. Like magic, like, this is basically like a, fr a flash creature in magic that also gained life, which wouldn't even be that good in magic. Um, but if it also magic, like, no, stopped but... an attacker and also killed the attacker, it'll be like really, really good. Kind of like the Wandering Emperor good. So that's kind of like how I'm looking at Ooh, this card now. He's good. Being... So I'm trying to figure out what it would be. Yeah, it'd be like if I had flash and then uh, enter the battlefield trigger and then um like pop like pop something that's like four uh four yeah it, it's kind of like that. the wandering emperor right it can come in and then and then get rid of a creature your opponent has and then it can also like it's also it makes attackers itself and you can flash it in on your opponent's yeah turn. yeah that, that, that's like that's like a good a good 10 out of 10 card like the wandering emperor is a very very strong card so yeah when you when you're, and, or like winona for some reason and, and weirdly enough if wandering emperor is also for for cost so it, it kind of yeah. It's, it's exactly like that and wandering emperor is white just which is, this is yellow so it's kind of a, a good parallel yellow is yellow is basically the white for digimon yeah. white in digimon is really weird it's, it's just like a, a color pie where it's like the things that they couldn't really physically put it into another color so it's just uh ambient of white uh so yeah, not really did, did you, digimon else. saw the wandering emperor being printed and was like i can make a card like that and then made magna angemon ace they made magna angemon and went this is too expensive we need a better version <laughs> yeah exactly um, even if you remove this, it's still cheaper by one cost to play this card. Yeah, ridiculous. Anyway, let's go ahead and go on to the last card, and we'll see if it's good or bad. We'll see if I get the a I four out of, this a four out of five. You know, it's not as good as the last card. This, this last card is going to be a bit more of a letdown, so I did try and like go big in the middle and then like sort of do the whole up and down. But this is one of my favorite cards. Okay, let's see it. One cost, Calling from the Darkness... It is main phase, delete one of your Digimon. Then return up to two purple Digimon cards from your trash to your hand. Okay. And this is a sorcery, right? It's like a main phase. You can only use this during your turn uh, kind of thing. An instant. Is it an instant? Because we don't really have, like, like, we don't really have, like, instant sorcery in terms of, like, speeds. We only really have just, I guess, sorcery would be the thing, but it's more of an instant sort of spell. So you can use it on your opponent's turn? That's like, we don't really have, like, uh, the back and forth or that. That's what... Blast is probably going to introduce. We do have delay, but that's more of like a thing that's on your turn currently. I think that's going to be moved over to like opponent stuff in the, in the future. Okay. But for now, like everything is like the one speed. And when this is knocked out of security, you add this card to its owner's hand. Um, it depends on how expendable your Digimon can be. Like you didn't show me any like small Digimon that have some enter the battlefield effect. Like if something had like enter the battlefield, like there's I know there's some cards in One Piece that it's like. When you play it, it looks at like the top, it's like three cards of your deck, and you can like grab one to your hand, and then sacrificing so it to this card. You would see be the good. Gilmon on the the, uh, the image of this card here in the set before this one. I think the set before this one, the set before that one. Uh, it has the effect of when it is removed from the battle area, gain a memory. Okay. Is the there a lot of cards with like death triggers like that? Uh, normally, it's like inherited effects, which is like your source um, skills. 
but there's not many things that say, you know, blow me up. Do it. Okay. A day. Are there cards that, are there a lot of cards that say, like, when this card goes to the trash? There are a few. Okay. Um, like, this is one cost. I could, I could imagine you, like, your opponent passing turn, you get three memory. You use one on, like, a, a pretty small Digimon that does some enter the battlefield, like, some, like, main phase effect or entrance effect. And then you sack it, and then you return the same card you just played from your graveyard to your hand. Can you do that? Does that work like that? Yeah. Okay. Um, this is, it's not card advantage because you're using a card, sacrificing something, and then getting two cards back. But if your enter the battlefield effect or graveyard effect, like slash go into the trash effect, is good, then this card would be playable. It would be good. Um, you get to add this so, card to the... it goes even. What was that? So for those who are trying to figure out, it, it goes even. So you yeah, it goes card, even zero. You pop a card, you gain two. Right. So it goes even. Which it goes even. It doesn't have any other any other additional ability. It, like there's a cards like that in Magic that says like sacrifice a creature, draw two cards, which are okay cards. Like there are some that are pretty good, like Deadly Dispute, which is you know sack, sacrifice a creature or an artifact, and then draw two cards, and then make a treasure token. Which like since you get something additional out of it, it's very good and works really well in sacrifice decks. Um, let's see. Getting things in your graveyard seems good. Is this a purple card or a blue card? Purple card. Okay. The purple mechanic seems to want to put things in your graveyard anyway. Because of yeah, the, so Del the Delph card that we like saw. Black and green is like kind of like he wants stuff into your, your trash in some way or another. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna, out of 10, I'm going to give this card like a 6. I think, I think it's okay. like playable, but I don't think it's like broken. I don't think it's like really good. Is that your... My final answer Fine is answer. that it is a good card in decks that want it, but it's not like ubiquitously played in like every purple deck, maybe. Like some purple decks would want it, but like maybe some don't. So final answer is six, yeah? Yeah. So you know we spoke about how good Blinding Ray was earlier? Which card? Blinding Ray, the second card, I believe. Yes, that one. The one that like trashes a card and then you gain memory? Yes. Uh, this is the same thing. So if you can't delete a Digimon, you can still return two cards. So you oh, do get hand advantage. I thought you had to delete a Digimon. No. So Digimon is all about um, doing as much as you can. Oh. Wow, this is like the opposite uh, you, of what I would think it would be. Like, no, it this, says, this it is, says uh, delete a Digimon, then return two purples. Like, it, it, it's worded like it, you have to delete the, the Digimon to, the, to return the purple Digimon. This is the biggest issue I have with Digimon wording. Because it's translated from Japanese to English, I feel like some of the sentence structures aren't quite uh, grammarly correct. But no, this is more of a case of delete one Digimon, full stop. Then, so that's already happened. If that hasn't happened, doesn't worry about it. Then you can return two cards to your hand from the trash. Oh. Wow. <laughs> that yeah, so is just, just do as really, much as really it misleading wording. It generally means that's its own thing. So, okay. uh... The reason why this card's really, really good is because there are quite a few things in purple where they were a while ago. They kind of like went away from it because they kind of realized, uh, whoopsie, uh, on deletion effects are absolutely astounding in this game. Especially cards that uh, do hand advantage because they get deleted. So they'll go, uh, all right, this, is on, this got deleted by non-battle, which is what it wants. Uh, an option card is non-battle. It then gets to like hand rip something from your opponents, but I can physically look at it. Or it can remove a security on top of you and give it to your opponent in their hand. And then they can loop that because it's only going to cost you one. And then in its sources, you'll gain memory from popping it. And then you get to play another one. And then if you had four of these, you could just do that four times and your opponent's down to like one security or zero securities. And they haven't really had a chance to play the game themselves. Wow. Okay. So the, yeah, the was, death, the death triggers early, of what you're talking about card. are pretty more... So it's like death triggers, yeah. Yeah, the, the death triggers of, the, of this game are a little bit more powerful than I thought. I have to explain what you just explained. So I was trying to find like a good card for you, but like you, you guessed how good it was too quickly. I was like, oh crap, he's got to his uh, his final choice. Oh, I, I guess can, uh, the other one too one. quickly. Yeah. If you're use if you're like playing a big a big Digimon that has like a death trigger, like remove your opponent removes a card from their hand, and then you remove the card from their from their security. It's like if those are like the death triggers, then this card be really good, and you actually want to delete one of your Digimon, but it has the option mm -hmm. of just like not deleting your Digimon at all. 
and then returning up to two purples from your trash to your hand. And maybe you do have those in your trash because the deck wants to put things in the trash anyway because of the Delve card that we already talked about, the, the, the broken in half card. So, yeah, yeah, this card, this card is uh, a little bit better that, than I thought it was, but I still think to, it was... I still, I, I still kind of like was like, oh, this, this card's like pretty good, but I thought it was niche, but I guess it's a little bit less niche than that. It's as niche as you think it is. There's not like a ton of decks that want to use this constantly. It's generally run as like a one of in a lot of purple decks because it's a case of like, I've used my big monster for the turn. My opponent has got rid of it. Um, I might as well bring some pieces back so I can start like building up another stack. And that's generally what it's used for now. Uh, before when it was a four of, then it was a bit different because people would like, pop things that they, uh, this thing called Eismon. And for every Eismon scatter mode, I think it is in the trash, uh, you can draw like X amount of cards. Mm, so it was a good way of like pop, popping the one thing, uh, bringing the other thing back. There's the X in the, the trash now. I'll draw this many cards. I'll pop it again, bring it back, and then you did that over and over again. So it's like, oh yeah, I've got like 15 cards in my hand. It's only turn two. Wow. Yeah. That's. Do you have a, do you have a hand limit in the game? No. No hand limit. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I mean, over overall, draw I think every, I think that John's no really, limit. What was that? No hand limit. Draw everything. Wow. Yeah, I mean, over, overall, I think there's a lot of interesting things going on. There's a lot of words. It's like almost as many words as like current Magic cards or even Yu-Gi-Oh cards sometimes with some cards. Like mm. the 15 cost thing has like a billion things for me to analyze. So I'm happy that I got things right the way that I got them right. I'm happy, my, I'm happy that my card game knowledge kind of pulled me through some of those concepts. So there was a couple of them that mm -hmm. I kind of got like half right, half wrong, but I feel like I did pretty good. I'd say, like, you, you looked at the cards and you read them and you went, like, this seems like it should be good on paper and you went with it and it's like, yeah, on paper it's very good. Or the, like I said, it's really hard to find bad Digimon cards that aren't literally just vanillas because Digimon is, a, like, a, a combo game as a whole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, the only it, thing in that, that aspect, is like, it's kind of like Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, Security Control is the only one. Where, where like, Yu-Gi-Oh is, yeah. is, is a combo game and there's kind of hard cards to find that are really bad. But there are cards that, since it's been around for so long... You can always find cards that are bad because it's been around for, you know, 25 yeah. years. Look at you, LOB. Yeah, exactly. All you and all your vanillas. <laughs> so, anyway, thank you once again, Agito, for coming on the show and talking to me about Digimon cards. Um, I do think the game is very interesting, and this is my first ever look at Digimon cards. Never seen one before. I had to ask about all the mechanics, so thank you for being patient with me with that. You're like, you're like this guy no has so many questions. But I um, appreciate you being, being patient with me. If you watching in the audience want to be on the show as well you can join the patreon the 15 dollar one is the it is right down in the description below there's all there's a lot of other ones as well that you can if you want to support the show uh by just a, a little tiny monetary amount you can or if you want to be on the show you can even do that so thank you once again agito for having for uh for having me for showing me the cards for the first time for being patient me? with me and i will see you in the next one peace